Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Um, today I'm going to be working on replacing the AC condenser on our 07 uh, Toyota Camry. This is a 2.4 liter engine. And the reason why I know that the AC condenser is bad is because um, last week um, my wife came home, there was uh, smoke coming from the front, you know, when she was uh, pulling in. And so um, I, you know, popped the hood and I looked down, all the way down there, all the way somewhere around in there, there was uh, uh, like a mist coming out. And then it also smelled like a refrigerant too. So I'm positive that that's what it was because we didn't have any issues with our AC prior to that. So the system should be empty now. I am going to hook my gauges up though. Once I um, remove the bumper, there's a, a shield underneath that it needs to be removed. And you know, before I get to the condenser and this up here needs to be removed as well. So I just wanted to kind of share this because I didn't see any videos on YouTube on how to do this. It looks like it should be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure I run into problems, you know, I always do when working on cars, especially doing something for the first time. But I wanted to take you along so that you can, you know, um, learn from my mistakes and hopefully this will help you out. First thing you want to do is disconnect the negative battery cable because um, you don't want the airbags to go off by accident. Okay, so the negative battery cable's been removed. I used the uh, rubber end cap just to cover the negative uh, battery post. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to go underneath. Uh, let me show you that right quick. Okay, so we're underneath uh, the front bumper cover. Okay, so there are a bunch of 10 millimeter screws so far from what I can see. Um, that's all the way around that I need to take off so this whole thing needs to come off first and then I should be able to see the fasteners for the bumper cover underneath as well okay so I removed the cover from underneath so this is what it looks like and it looks like all the fasteners for that uh, for the bumper are off so what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you what the cover underneath looks like and I was able to do this without putting her up on jack stands it probably would have been a little easy to get to some of the fasteners because um, I had to kind of do it blind with jack stands but it is you can do it without I think I just broke one so let me show you what the covers look like. Okay, so this is the one on the driver's side. And it's only uh, this, this is a 10 millimeter. One, two screws, and then you have this fastener right here. Yeah, this is the fastener right here. So um, pop that one out, and then this is actually what's in front of the wheel. And this has, uh, these are 10 millimeter screws too. And these screws aren't, aren't metal um, because they don't stick to my magnetic pan. So they must be made out of some kind of aluminum or something. So it's just three there. So let me show you the other side. So this is on the driver's side. And again, this, this one only had, had two screws, one here one here and then there's a fastener there then there's one here and then there's one here then of course there's this other part that was in front of the wheel so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on um, taking the upper part of the bumper off oh also one more thing don't forget to unhook the floodlights as well I'm not quite sure I have to look in my manual to see how to do that. I know this cover pops off of here. Um, 
So I'm going to do that. I'll show you once I figure it out. Okay, so um, this right here is plastic. It's another fastener. And all you do is, is just take a flathead screwdriver and just pop this out. And then it, it comes out. Okay, and you do this on both sides. Okay, quick note with this fastener here. Make sure that it's turned this way uh, before you try to pop it out because if you don't, you're going to break it. Okay, so I'm also on the driver's side and you want to pull the splash shield back and there's another possibly a 10 millimeter screw there that you want to take out and this will release the upper part of the uh, bumper. Okay, so here's the bumper cover removed. I actually have it on my work stand so that it's not on the ground. Let me show you the front. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like up front without the bumper cover on. And see this connector right here, this is for the floodlights. Make sure you, um, when you reconnect these, um, make sure that you um, apply some, oh, I'm drawing a mind blank. You know what, when I grab my tool, my tube, I'll show it to you. I'm drawing a mind blank right now. So, I thought I was going to have to remove the headlights, but I didn't have to. So, I'm actually going to put the screw back in. And so, this is the condenser right here. And right down here, somewhere down here is where the leak was. They didn't put any dye in the system because I used my UV light to try to see exactly where it's at. But it didn't illuminate anything. So when I pull this out, I'll be able to tell. So now what I have to do, uh, I have to remove this right here. So it should be these two bolts there. I need to take this off here. Um, you know, with all of this stuff here, I haven't quite worked through this part yet because all this is connected to here. Um, so I'm not sure. And then these bolts right here. So this is the, the horn. Uh, one, I think, is for the alarm. So I know I'm going to unhook those there. Yeah. But I'm not sure about this part because, see, there's this bracket here. This goes all the way down there. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that part yet. But I'll let you know. Okay, so what I'm showing you now, that's the fog light there. And you see the cord hanging down. So you can actually access it from um, within the wheel well and you see the tire is still on. Um, I had to take off a couple more fasteners here because I was having a hard time getting the bumper off here. But I found out that it just comes out. It just snaps out like that. I'll take you on the other side, the passenger side, and show you the bolts or the screws you'll have to take out. So right here you can reach them and unhook the, uh, the floodlights. So, hold on. Okay, so I'm on the passenger side. So you have one screw there, again, 10 millimeter. Uh, where's that other one? Uh, there's another one here. It's a 10 millimeter. And that was another one. No, that's it. So take those out and then you'll be able to fold this down. Okay, so I remove the two bolts here, the air box, and the two bolts over here. Now, uh, oh, I disconnected the horn here. Um, this one, I couldn't get the wire out, so I just unhooked it, which it was right here. This is a 12 millimeter bolt. So now what I think that I can do, I'm actually removing this bolt here. This is 10 millimeter. Make sure you have a ratcheting uh, wrench for that. And then I'm gonna remove these bolts, these two here. 
then I should be able to just lift this out. Okay, so as you can see, the bracket lifted right out. Um, no problem at all. So I'm going to just put this over here. Be careful because the cable to the hood latch is still connected right here. Um, I guess I, I could unhook it from down here. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably have to do that. Because I think that's the only thing that's really holding it. Just so that I can have better access to when I pull this condenser up and out. So really the only thing that's holding the condenser in is you have this bolt here. Looks like it's a 10 millimeter here. And then you have one down here. And then one down here. And then of course you have the AC lines right here. But I'm going to hook up my gauges first to make sure that there's no pressure in the system before I even unhook any of this right here. I, it should have leaked out, but I'm going to test it out anyway. Okay, you, as you can see, I've got um, my hoses connected to the high and the low ports. Um, they're open. Same thing on my gauge here. I have them open. As you see, there's no pressure in the system, so everything's leaked out, just like I suspected. So I'm going to go ahead and unhook these, and then I'm going to go ahead and take this condenser out. Okay, so the AC lines going into the condenser are both 10 millimeter bolts, as well as the bolts that are holding the condenser in. So remove all of those, and the condenser should pop right out. Yeah, I forgot to mention, um, a flex head ratcheting wrench should work because down here there's a uh, this lip right here is covering that so you can't even get a ratchet in here so you will have to use one with a flex head quick tip when removing the AC lines there's going to be there's a little notch that's uh, right here that you can use a screwdriver and just kind of pry gently on both lines also make sure you cap off the openings on both um, as soon as after you disconnect them so that uh, dirt and stuff won't, uh, and additional uh, air won't get into the system. Okay, alright, so got all the bolts out and I'm about to remove the condenser now. So, got to make sure these lines are clear that's over here. Yeah. Then it just lifts right out, like so. So I'm doing this with one hand. Move this out of the way. Okay. Um, well, I don't have my tripod set up, but you get the point. So I'm gonna have to put my phone down so that I can move this out of the way. So here is the new AC condenser here. This is a Spectra Premium condenser. And as you can see here, this is the number here. I bought this off of Amazon. Okay, uh, and this is the old AC condenser here. So the leak was somewhere around in this area here. Um, I mean, I, I really can't even tell where. You know, I mean, there's a lot of damage down here. I see like right here, there's some of the fans, cooling fans are messed up, but um, yeah, I know it was down in this area somewhere. So let me line them up and um, make sure that it'll actually fit. Okay, so the new condenser is on top and the brackets, you know, pretty much lined up. You can see there. This one looks a little longer, but it could be that it's off a little bit. This right here, this is where the uh, uh, receiver dryer, is that what they call it? Uh, hold on. Yeah, that's what it's called. This is it right here. I wasn't sure if, and this is the part number, this is bought off Amazon too. I wasn't sure if this one came with one, so I'm actually going to go ahead and unscrew this um, 
so to actually see. All right, so uh, look up here while you see the side, it's uh, pretty much the same. And the top, the brackets have the notch and the curve on both of them. So it actually is, it looks the same for the most part. The only difference is, is these here. You know, if as you can see, this is the original, and you see how far they're kind of spaced apart. Um, but I don't think that should be a, a problem. I'll let you know if it is. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, get this in, and I'll let you know if this already has the receiver dryer in here. Well, it looks like the receiver dryer is in, in here. I, I can't even get this plastic part out. But here's the cap for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some peg oil on this, um, seal this back up, and then I'm going to add uh, one ounce of peg oil to the condenser um, itself. I'm going to verify that on the internet, but the, I'm, I'm going from memory with that. Okay, so um, my phone needed to be charged up, so I kind of jumped ahead. So I've got, already got the compressor, I'm sorry, the condenser back in. Already reconnected the lines. Make sure that you don't use any air tools to tighten these up. Um, tighten them up by, by hand so that way you won't cross the this since this is aluminum. Also make sure that you replace the O-rings as well. I bought mine from the dealer. They're a couple dollars. Uh, you can probably get a set of uh, old rings from the auto parts store as well. And this is the little mug that I use to uh, measure the peg oil that I put in the system. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to put a vacuum on the system to test it to make sure that it actually is all sealed. Okay, so this is the vacuum pump that I'm going to be uh, using here. Bought this from Harbor Freight a couple years ago. So here it is, got it all hooked up. Um, you want to go ahead and hook the yellow line up here. Make sure all the gauges are closed. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And I'm actually going to let it probably uh, stay on for about 30 minutes. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and open these up here. Do the high. I'm going to do the low. And now you're going to send me. And you see how it's going down. Now, before, one of my lines actually had, was leaking. So, I may have to test that out. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but I bought another gauge just so that I can test that. But right now... Um, it looks like it's about, it's almost on 30, which is actually really good. So I'm going to let this run for 30 minutes. This is what time it is. Yes, this is at night time or in the morning. I'll just wait on look at it. So I'll, about 2.15, I'll uh, come back and turn it off. Correction. You know what? I just realized that because I had the system uh, open longer than I would have liked, I'm actually going to let it run for an hour. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put up my tools and I'm going to go shower up, come back out and then turn it off and see if it holds, um, you know, if the needles stay where they are. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half since I've been running the vacuum on the system. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close uh, both of these. So I'm gonna start with uh, high first. Then I'm gonna do the low.
and I'm going to turn off my pump. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit overnight. And uh, these are the readings, as you can see here. So if there's no leaks, then it should be, both needles should be right where they are. And see that this one just dropped down to about 29. Now, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's because of he just turned off the pump or not. But we'll see. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this. Um, after I had turned off the vacuum pump, um, I noticed the pressure has started to drop. Uh, or vacuum, I started to lose vacuum. And remember I mentioned um, earlier that the gauges that I originally hooked up here had a leak some time ago. Well, apparently it still had the leak and that's what was causing the pressure drop, well, the vacuum for it to lose vacuum because right now, uh, yeah, it's pretty much where I left it, right on about 29. So, yeah, these are the new gauges here. I've just hooked them up and everything, and now it's holding vacuum. Sorry, it just keeps moving like that. Okay, so, yeah, I'll check back with this in the morning and see, uh, you know, how well it does. Okay. Okay, so right now um, you're looking at the gauge, and you can actually see that um, the level hasn't moved. Uh, this is actually the new gate that I actually redid the vacuum on the system for an hour and I let it sit for 12 hours so it hasn't moved. It's like right at 29, uh, negative 29 mercury. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to put the bumper cover back on, which I'm not going to show you that, and I'll come back as soon as I'm ready to fill the system. Make sure that when for all of the electric connections you use some dielectric grease just so prevent moisture from getting inside the connectors and prevent corrosion. And then also I'm using some anti-seize on all of the bolts I took out because what I noticed is that all of them had a little rust on them. So I'm cleaning them with some DW40 first, wiping it, and then I'm putting a little bit of anti-seize on it. Guys, I just wanted to point this out to you. Um, I noticed here that the bottom um, cover is actually labeled. So as you see here, this one's R for the right. And then also, this is the part that's in front of the wheel. And if you look right there, uh, where is it? Right there, you see right there, um, it says right. So that way, in case you mix up the parts, you'll know which way that it goes. Okay, so I am all done putting the bumper cover back on, and I'm ready to fill the system. As you can see still, um, the numbers are great as far as the vacuum. Okay, so these are all the things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need refrigerant, which I have two 12-ounce cans. Uh, 134A and if you look on here these are the specs for the refrigerant so what this breaks down to as far as an ounces is concerned sport is 1.21 pounds of refrigerant that breaks down to 19.36 ounces Uh, so, um, right here, I have my scale, and what I noticed is, let me turn it on, and you see it's on ounces. Each one of my cans, both of them weighs 15.1 ounces, and the scale is accurate too. I tested that. Both of them are 15.1. So what I'm thinking is is that it's accounting for the weight of the actual can too as well. So for my calculations, what I'm gonna to have to do, I'm gonna use one whole 12 ounce can, and then from the second can, 
I'm going to weigh it on the scale as it's going in, to which I'm going to stop at 10.46 ounces, if I could even um, get it to that. Also right here, this would be very helpful, this chart here, which will give you an idea of what the low and high pressure should be depending on the abundant temperature. And in my case, look up here, um, I'm in the garage and it's about 79 degrees. Okay, you're also going to need uh, safety glasses. I have a measuring cup here because I'm going to be putting another uh, half of an ounce in the system. Um, just because I only put that one ounce in for the condenser and it didn't mention, I couldn't verify how much it should have been because it has the receiver dryer in the condenser as well. I'm also going to put in one fourth of UV dye. Uh, you can see right there, this one actually has four uh, treatments in the system and the, look on the back of it tells you how much it is that you're supposed to pour in and which what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour it using the, the yellow tube here the supply line here uh, then I have my can tap here and I have my thermometer which I'm going to put inside and um, that's pretty much it so let me go ahead and get this stuff hooked up uh, so well actually so I can pour this in okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna screw this and ooh, I feel it's gonna be kind of hard to gotta use bottom This one here. So I'm going to try to pour it in here. Open that. I won't make a mess. Now, I know there is an actual gadget that you can buy to where you're hooking on the low pressure line here and you can add the UV dye any peg oil into the system but I've also been able to see where people have used this tube here to add it to the system and it is going down I'm making a little mess but it's okay because I'm only adding just this little bit Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I'm actually going to just finish this up and I'll come back and then I'll show you the UV dye being poured in. Now I'm about to pour in the UV dye. This stuff is really messy so you definitely want to make sure um, that while you're doing this you're wearing gloves. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this on the top of the can. So I'm going to screw this, so this all the way out because I don't want to punch the can while I'm turning it on. So as you can see, when you turn it clockwise, the pin calms down and what's going to do is puncture the can and then you just leave it like that all the way down because that will prevent any other refrigerant from coming out. 
guess I'm gonna screw this on all the way. Like so then I'm gonna hook my line up. Take a look and see how much weight is on here now. Wow, look at how much you put on there. 19.5. Okay, well, I already know that I'm going to go ahead and put this old can in. So, let me just go ahead, turn it on, and while filling the system, you want to hold the can upside down so that the liquid refrigerant like so will go in. So I'm gonna put my safety glasses on first. And I'm gonna go ahead and puncture this, which I believe it did. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open it up all the way. Now, what I'm going to use a screwdriver for is, is I'm going to purge the air from the system using this valve here. So let me put you down so I can show you that. Also, you got to be careful because in my case, I have UV dye in here plus the oil when it comes out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So this is going to get all the air out of the system. This UV dye is like terrible. All right. Okay, so I'm inside now, and as you can see, the vent temp, well, actually, it's, what, 79 degrees in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead, turn on the AC, and I'm going to turn it all the way down to the lowest setting, and I'm going to turn on the lowest fan speed and as you can see what's coming out yeah, it looks like it's about 79 okay so now I'm going to go ahead and start putting the refrigerant in quick note make sure the recirculation mode is off I forget it turns on when we turn on our AC okay so I put one can in actually went in pretty quick and these are the pressures now the AC still hasn't kicked on yet, so I'm about to put the second, start on the second can, and that one I'm going to do real slowly. And I just wanted to show you, this is the can that's empty, and you can see it weighs 3.3 .3 ounces. Okay, so um, I'm racing the engine up to around 2,000 RPM, and you can see that she's really cold it looks like about maybe 42 degrees um, here 40 now so yeah she's cooled off quite a bit and it feels really good and this is the low setting let me show you the okay so these are the numbers that I have right now um, they're a little low compared to the chart but seeing the temperature that I got, I'm happy with that. And let's see if it'll, uh, the compressor will go on and kick on. So 
so you can uh, we can see what the levels look like. So it looks like it's hovering around maybe around 2, 170 on the high side and about maybe 23, 24 on the low side. All right. So um, I hope this helped you out. You know, um, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, you guys have yourself a blessed day.